amazing stuff. Let's go to Roger Wicker right now, the Republican senator from the beautiful state of Mississippi. He was with, by the way, the president last night. Senator, uh, good to have you. Thanks for hey, taking Neil, the time. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, uh, first off on this processor, why is it that there's only one available copy and 100 senators have to read that? Just if you do the lineup and the time it would take to do that, that could go well until late tomorrow. You know, I, I heard Chad say that. I'm not sure that's accurate to me. Can't be, right? Uh, it, it would be silly uh, not to make uh, 100 copies. The, the main thing is uh, FBI reports are, are normally uh, not uh, given to the public. And to me, uh, uh, the, the thing to do would be to, to make uh, 50 copies or 100 copies and just make sure that they're secure there in the room. I was not told uh, at, at our meeting uh, at uh, 1 o'clock today that, that there would only be one copy. What I was told is that we expect the report today, uh, that, that there'll be an opportunity for every senator to, to go and read a copy of the report, but also a lot of senators may want to go and be briefed by the lead counsel on the committee, either the Republican lead counsel or the Democrat lead counsel. And, uh, and uh, to me, that, that might be a, a better way to, uh, to give the senators comfort. But, but there'll be adequate time for everybody to know exactly what's in the report. And I would, I would just remind you what Senator Biden said uh, back in the day and what people have reiterated. The FBI report will not make a conclusion. There'll be a series of these 302 reports with sort of a cover sheet saying, uh, these are the interviews we conducted and uh, here's, what we, uh, here's what we can report that the witness has said. And then we read, uh, we read what the witness has said and make our own conclusions. All right, so there's no way to know at this point who's left in or left out of that report, but well, well I've got you, Senator. We're getting a letter uh, from uh, Christine Ford's attorney, uh, Deborah Katz, to Chairman Chuck Grassley of the Judiciary Committee, mm -hmm. saying, and I quote, regarding the documents you've requested in your letter of October 2nd, Dr. Ford is prepared to provide these documents to the FBI when she is interviewed. We've not yet heard from the FBI about scheduling an interview with her. If the report is now imminently going to be in the Senate's hands, it's safe to say that that won't be included, right? Well, let me just say, I, I agree with Mitch McConnell. The goalposts keep getting moved. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Blasey Ford was interviewed extensively in a, in a public hearing by, by counsel, by members of both parties, and, uh, and, and she had a very long time uh, to to uh, make her point and did, um, and uh, and and so I would urge her to go ahead and provide uh, provide the, the copies. I can't imagine what she would say in a relatively brief FBI interview that she didn't say in hours and hours of testimony. All right, let me ask you a little bit about the reaction you had to the president's comments on Dr. Ford. He's already got some criticism from. Uh, a number of senators, a number of your colleagues, including Jeff Flake, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, concerned that it didn't set the right tone. Others said it was even worse. What did you think? Well, it, it seemed to me that the, that the president uh, finally decided to talk about the inconsistencies in Dr. Blasey Ford's testimony. And uh, he may have done so in, 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 a, in a sort of a lighthearted way, making fun of, of the inconsistencies and allegations. But I would, I would uh, point uh, our listeners, our viewers' uh, attention to the report of the prosecutor from Arizona, who came back with a really more, a, a very scholarly report that said essentially the same things that the president said in the public rally last night. The story doesn't add up. Uh, the witnesses that Dr. Blasey Ford um, listed uh, um, actually refute the allegations she made. And, uh, and so it's actually a, a weaker case than most he said, she said cases, which are inherently uh, weak in and of themselves. I don't believe the account of Dr. Ford, and I think more and more uh, Americans now that they're beginning to hear uh, about um, her um, past history of, of counseling people on how to take a polygraph test, more and more of that comes out. I think uh, fewer and fewer Americans are going to believe this is a fair account, and I, and I continue to believe mm -hmm. Judge Kavanaugh is somebody who has a stellar record and who has a, a lifetime to look at. 
and, and I do not believe he's the type of person that these allegations would be true about. All right, Senator, thank you very much for taking the time. Again, just to update you. you folks what we're waiting on. And the good